All right, what's going on, everyone? Uh, welcome back to someone's PC. This is gonna be a special video. Pretty much, um, I was kind of getting bored of us not having videos in a while, and Dylan's been away at college, um, and so he's been super busy. Chris is sleeping right now, and I think Mark is either working or sleeping. So I figured um, I might as well get this video out there because so many people have been asking me about um, Tyrantrum and how the deck's gonna be in standard. So. I'm prepping to possibly use it uh, week one of cities as well as like two other decks um, but it's definitely standing out to be like one of the top tier ones that I like right now um, so we're just gonna get right into it um, here's uh, my current list I'm not gonna go through every single card because uh, you guys should know what most of the stuff does um, use Tyrantrum uh, one hit chaos people with uh, dragon impact with the muscle band um, Juicy, uh, Giratina, uh, OPS Mess, Beast Night March, Beast Best Be Queen, etc. etc. Um, and some new additions that we have going into standard. So, with the loss of Keldeo, um, I added in a Zoroark line, which I'm really liking a lot. Um, I know a couple of people I've been talking to have been talking about how inconsistent it could be, um, how it's like on and off. It kind of absorbs some of your Ultra Balls in the middle of the game. Um, towards late game, but I, I th really think it's useful, and its attack, Mind Jack, is so savage. Um, again, so many decks that need Shaman, Shaman to set up, or against opponents that just don't really know what they're doing in the game, and overbench, and like use your own Skyfield um, to put themselves like a Pokemon, because, I don't know, maybe they don't expect you to attack with Mind Jack or something like that, but yeah, um, I probably swept like three or four games off of using Mind Jack on a loaded up um, Pokemon on the bench. I just lie standard and beat its face in. So I really like Zoroark. Um, the next edition we added um, was a Smeargle. Uh, people have been talking about playing Enhanced Hammer and playing the new Drachi promo in order to deal with Tyrantrum. Um, it definitely deals with Giratina because once you lose a DD you're not going to be able to get that back in any way. But in terms of a Tyrantrum you can turn one of your metal energies um, into a fighting energy when you have it active using the ability second coat. So a one of in this deck alongside two fighting energy has done wonders for me. Um, I've swept tons of games just by having like my Zoroark line and the smear girl up um, alongside even just one Bronzong um, and was able to like power up Tyrant from from there, attach manual DDEs from my hand. Um, and if I miss DDEs, maybe I drew into like uh, a second, the second fighting or another amount of energy, and I was able to streamline Dragon Impact super consistently. So I'm I'm really happy with Smeargle and adding into the deck. I think it's broken. It's really really good. Um, so definitely test that out if you're looking to use Tyrantrum uh, in the future. The last card that I added in terms of pokes um, was this Promo Jirachi. So a lot of people have been asking me. I think it's like six today. And they're like, is Drachi even legal? I was like, yeah, it came out on uh, what, November 4th, the same day as Breakthrough. It came out one of the blisters. So it will be legal for week one of Cities, which is basically the only time people actually need to be playing this. Um, it has uh, the attack Stardust, which is adorable when um, Stardust Dragon did like uh, beast effects over in Yu-Gi-Oh. And what it does is uh, it does 10 damage, discard special energy attached to your opponent's Pokemon, and then it becomes immune to all effects of attacks, including damage uh, done to it the following turn. So, what it's really been doing is regulating the silly, like, double colorless energy, absurd go ham decks, um, and kind of forcing them to play around this basic Pokemon that could stall them out or cause them have uh, cause them to have like awkward prize trades. So a couple of situations that I've been in have been um, I go against like a night a night march. Uh, I'm using Jirachi in my Magnezone deck because um, I'm not even gonna talk about how it works in Tyrant Uh I'm using uh, Jirachi on Magnezone deck, and the night march gets like a three prize lead. I judge, and then we go down like four cards apiece. I bring up a Jirachi and knock off a DCE. Um, he draws and has to like attach a DCE to the bench Pokemon and then he has to pass for the turn because if he attaches the active I'm just going to get it again and I draw, attach some lightning energies, Lysander up the uh, the Pumpkaboo with the DCE 
and then knock off that DCE, and the game pretty much ended right there. Because he burned through three DCEs already from his deck, has one left over, and still hasn't dealt with a Dirachi on the board. And I don't know, I think it's amazing. I think it's going to break the format, um, at least in terms of deck building from good players' point of views. Some people might look at it and be like, oh, why don't you just enhance Hammer? Or why don't you just play Zerosic or this and that? It's, it's a different, uh, how do I say? It brings a different utility to the deck that, that most decks won't normally have. And the fact that it has one retreat and uh, a colorless attack cost makes it so splashable that any deck should be able to utilize it. It should bring down Totina and cause the death of it. Or it'll cause more people to play Escape Rope and bank on like an Escape Rope Lysander play onto Jirachi and if they're doing that it's amazing because they're doing it on um, a non-EX Pokemon that isn't really crucial to your like Dex engine but it's just a really good deck against whatever they're playing so I really like it it even bops this deck like which I mentioned earlier so um, that's why we run our own escape rope and if you're able to get the one of escape rope when your opponent's trying to play into a Jirachi then you can use escape rope Put Jirachi back onto the bench, negate its ability, um, of, or negate its immunity, so to say, and then um, via Seeker up one of your Lysanders in, in Grave, and then Lysander it and take the KOs, etc., etc. And that's how we'll be able to keep the Giratina lock going. Um, everything else looks fine. Uh, Colrus is gone, which sucks, so now we play Professor Birch's Observations. Some people complain it's a coin flip. I love Birch personally. Um, if, if you know you're going to Birch for the turn, or like opening turn and you go for an ultra ball and you have like a full setup but you don't have your sky field up yet then you might as well use that initial ultra ball to get one pieces of the engine that's not hoopa or shaman or like add slash like if like if you need tyrantrum or guarantee in this attacker um and like as the attacker in the matchup or you need like to establish more bronzors then definitely get that first and then play your birch because if you're hit four and then you hit an ultra ball amongst it you're golden you're gonna hit a shaman you're gonna like jam your opponent if in that four you get one of the shaman, then cool, same thing happens. But you don't have to burn that initial shaman just to get m attempt to get more setup and then play your support or follow up. That's pretty much how I've I've started playing once I've transitioned into standard. Um, I've kind of been targeting my my engine more and then uh, like banking on myself of getting tails. I, I I hope I get unlucky so I can get just four cards from it and then play accordingly. If I get lucky and get seven, then cool, I'm a beast. I get a flip coins, you know, then that's all good. Um, Floatstone came out in Breakthrough, so we're gonna play that. This is broken. Uh, muscle Band's here, cool. Double Dragon's Energy, four, two Fighting Energy, and six Metal Energy. So, just in case you missed that at the bottom. Um, how do I say this? I still love this deck. This deck's so good. Um, people have been asking me, like, what do you really lose to? Um, what are some tough matchups? I would say Vespi Queen's insanely tough. Um, the new age Vespi Queen players are probably teching a 2 2 Bronzong line in order to power up a Vespi in one turn and duck the Chaos Wheel from Giratina, as well as their own Jirachi, in order to cut themselves off the Chaos Wheel lock. So, initially in Expanded, my game plan was 200% Giratina, you never use Tyrantrum once, and you just Chaos Will them out of resources, and hopefully they don't Blacksmith onto one of their pokes. Now that decks are kind of adapting and they're going to be playing a Bronzong line alongside a Flareon, as well as a Blacksmith, you can't 200% rely on Chaos Wheel. Um, you can if your opponent like runs out of Vespi Queens and Combis onto their bench and you're, and you're able to keep up with exchanges in terms of attackers that's all juicy but um, that ma matchup I would say is still 50-50 even with their loss of Vengeance Flareon um, and your loss of Colrus so uh, it's not that bad um, Lucario bats they get bodied Manetric it's a body um, what else is in this format Marowak uh, Mega Skeptile EX won UK, so maybe some people will hype that up. Uh, Totina is super free after we got Jirachi. Like, that deck is so funny. 
Because there's like, alright, I'm going to quake and punch you. And then you just get there, sitting there, and you're like, Stardust. Stardust. And then when you open the game, you're like, the the mindset you should be in is just burn all your supporters, get your Ultra Ball, Ultra Ball gets you Jirachi, and you just keep there and sit there and start us. Um, don't be bad, don't bench it, and then let your opponent Lysander Jirachi off the bench, and then band and hit it, and if they're playing like Toad Bats, they're gonna do the exact same thing, but they're gonna hit it with a Gold Bat, and you're gonna get bodied, so. Uh, same, same concept. Just, don't be bad, be good. Don't bench the Jirachi. Uh, I don't know. I like this deck a lot. Um, Losing, how, how else can I say this? Losing Keldeo hurts. Uh, increased play of Enhanced Hammer is probably going to happen. Um, which begs the question, people are probably like, oh, Russ, just play a Bunnelby. No, you don't need it. You don't need that garbage. Um, the amount of times that you're going to try and use Bunnelby to throw DDEs back in your deck, you either, one, use your DDEs incorrectly and attach them and allow them to get Enhanced Hammer without taking prizes with it. You weren't utilizing your resources. Um, or two, the deck that you're playing against is like a deck that's so fast when they enhance hammer you um, or like use Jirachi against you, having to sacrifice your turn to use Obanobi to add DDEs back in your deck or is only going to cause you to fall further behind in the game state because they're going to lie Sander up stuff on your bench that you're going to need to attack with or you're going to need to use. Um, if you enter a game state where you're able to use Bunnelby, throw them back in the deck and keep a Tyrant Trims at hand, and then you have like three Bronzong set up, um, and they just lie Sander one and knock it out, that that's cool. I mean, I guess you got really lucky, but I, I don't wanna I don't wanna bank on that at all. Um Hex Hex Maniac's gonna hurt you. I think you'll see more play in standard than it doesn't expanded because um there's a lot there's a lot more like thoughtless decks running around. Um I say thoughtless as in like they don't use too many abilities to get their engine running like Mega Manetric. Um, uh, Vespi Queen, um, and like Night March, like just to hype some up. And so, so when you when they play either two Hex or they prioritize playing a Hex after their full setup just to start Okoing your Pokemon, then you're gonna need to start playing accordingly, um, and use your Metal Links correctly, and then use your Second Coats correctly before you go into their turn using Hex. So that's why we have our own Hex. So um, I'm really ranting. I don't really have like a, a notepad set up. I should I should have like had all my thought process out earlier, but um, that's the general game plan I have going into week one after testing for a bit. Um Cario Bats this and that. Um how do you deal with Focus Ash? Generally any deck that plays Focus Ash, you should be able to guarantee them. If they start bringing up Jirachi against you, um Utilize that turn that they're Jirachiing to put energy on your Tyrantrum and Lysander the stuff up that shouldn't have Focus Ash because they couldn't attach it in the first place and one hit knock it out with Dragon Impact. Um, discarding your DDE in the process, that way they don't bring up Jirachi in order to revenge Stardust against um, your Tyrantrum and so forth. That's why that's why Smeargle's so good, man. This thing's it's really, really good. Um, so that's that's another like matchup game plan. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please comment like particular matchups in your head that you think might be problematic, or maybe some matchups that you're having issues with that I think is completely easy. Because maybe you're playing it wrong. Maybe I'm playing it um, against people who don't know what they're doing, and just getting some lucky wins out of there. Uh, if I would make any changes from this based upon the meta or what you guys are expecting, if you expect to see a lot of Mega Manetric or a lot of colorless array, um, or a lot of just mega decks in general, you can add one parallel, uh, one faded town in here um, in place of a sky field. That's what I did for expanded regionals. It was fantastic. Um, there's plenty of times when uh, everyone would ask me, like, Soon isn't three sky field more consistent? And I never once needed the faded town in my hand to ever be a sky field. The only reason I have three in here is because I think um, the way standard is progressing, I need to spit out my combo as soon as possible, and having another sky fill in there might be able to get the job done. When compared to expanded, I just wanted bronze ores on my bench, and then I do a huge chorus because my opponent also went combo crazy, and using that chorus to finally get my sky field and proceed to play all my resources from there. So, um, yeah, 
Dropping one Skyfield does not hurt. Playing two Skyfields is perfectly fine. Don't think otherwise. If if you think I'm wrong, take a Skyfield in your deck, flip it upside down, and start playing accordingly. And then when you draw the upside down Skyfield, play it as if it's Fady Town, and see how many times it's gonna gonna like nah, how do I say slow you down because it wasn't supposed to be a Skyfield. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? All right. Um, heavy ball, level ball. Some people are like, why don't you play heavy ball? Why don't you play level ball? You don't need it. You really don't. I tried both. Thought it was meh. Um, it still seems like meh. The only reason I might want it is to get early game Bronzors. Um, at that point, I might as well just be playing Bridget. And Bridge is not good in this because you kind of want to draw Skyfield plus Hoopa. And then you Hoopa the game. You Hoopa for the win. And, yeah. If you like Heavy Ball in your deck, if you like Level Ball, that's cool. I mean, you can go for that consistency. I tend to favor more tech. Um, in order to have games I consider unwinnable give me like that little slight edge. That like little escape rope on a Jirachi so I can lie center and pop in the mouth and still win with Giratina. Kind of some kind of gameplay. Um, if you're feeling that the draws in the deck aren't going as well and you want to add more supporters, uh, Judge is better than Ace Trainer in every single way. I would never play Judge in here though. I'd rather have another Shauna or another Birch. Um, Reason being is when I judge to control my opponent using this deck, I feel like I should have just used Tyrantrum or Giratina for the control and then used the Sycamore Birch to further my game state and thin out my deck. So that should make a little bit more sense to you guys. Um, other than that, uh, some decks I think that are top tier and standard right now. Vespi Queen with Bronzong and Ariados because you need Ariados to take care of Focus Sash. Um, yeah, Vespi Queen's so good. Stupid decks, man. Revenge. It's too real. Another one is Lucario Bats. That was having some hype over in Europe. Um, at least from people I talked to and uh, a couple friends I have over there. And they said it got a lot of hype, so with hype comes hate. And I don't think the deck performed too well at UK Regionals. Um, Night March is still very good. Some people are attacking uh, Milotix into it, just to like get resources out of your grave, DCs, etc. Um, and they're also using Bronzongs for energy acceleration, just so they don't get trapped out by Jirachi or Enhanced Emery, uh stuff like that. I don't like Night March. I'll never play that deck ever, uh, just because if you prize <laughs> if you prize the wrong Night Marchers now in standard than you did back then, you don't have uh, those three or four new EX to save you. Like, you, you prize three Joltik, and you're sitting on Pumpkin Booze, and your opponent Giratina is you, like, turn two, and you're just sitting there. Like, please, where's my Jirachi? Because you can't play a D-Valley down. It's, just, it's very awkward. Um, and, yeah. I don't, I don't want the prizes to dictate my game. At least, at least not in playing in standard. Mm, what else is there? Magnezone Raikou. That deck is beast. The deck is so good. If you're playing it, please play an Octillery. Octillery is so good. Uh, a 2-2 two -two line with level balls. And the deck just flies. Super flies. Um, I am considering playing it for week one or two. My issue with that is if my opponents are smart and play Hex Maniac. Or if they get like a really juicy hand and go first. And I draw like Mediocre. I don't even get like turn 2 Magnezone or something. And the Hex Maniac... Hex Maniac me like turn two or three and like take a lead in prize trades with a non EX deck, then I feel like I'm, I'm pretty much out of it. Um, with Tyrantrum, I don't feel the same way because you can throw out your complete combo and draw back to back DDEs and just jam your opponent in the face with some Chaos Wheels and Dragon Impacts. Something you can't do in Magnezone. So. Um, yeah. That should be it for this video. Uh, Dolan should be back in like a few days uh, for us to do a couple more standard discussion. Not even sure if he tests, if he's testing. Uh, he should be testing a little bit. Uh, knowing him, he's gonna end up playing Vespi Queen. Easy peasy. There's no way that the man's not going to. If if he doesn't, then I'll I'll be surprised. I'll eat my own words. But he's gonna be playing it. Um, but leave comments below on what deck you guys would like me to evaluate next, please. Make it a decent deck. 
don't give me like garbage. Give me like a top tier deck or maybe maybe an idea that's rogue that can make it. Um, I'm probably gonna be testing Mega Sceptile for the next couple days just to see if I can tweak it a little more to deal with the concept of my opponent playing uh, like a two a two two flurry online inside Vespi Queen or something because I don't think much else can stand up to um, the Sceptile with like super scoop ups other than a Tyrantium with a muscle band and a Faded Town which more than likely no one's going to be playing because week one Manetric just sounds like an awful call to me so yeah um, thanks for logging in guys and take it easy